Welcome to KISS FAQ Song Stories. In this series, we'll focus on the histories of some of KISS's best and least known songs. In this episode, Into the Void, originally released on KISS's Psycho Circus album in 1998. As a prospective song title, Into the Void dated back to the Hotter Than Hell era. Gene had originally scrawled a lyrical idea in one of his many idea books. Space race is underway. All contestants, right this way. Please line up or get away. Into the void with you. Into the void and away. It's not surprising that hadn't been recycled really. Ace had tracked several demos with Anton Figg at his home studio in preparation for the Psycho Circus sessions. The songs included You Make It Hard For Me, Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Rock and Roll, Try Me, Freedom, Shaking Sharp Shooter, Hypnotize, plus an untitled jam known as Carl's Song Idea. Into the Void was developed out of Shaking Sharp Shooter, which was built around a mildly amusing title. Ace wrote the song with Carl Cochran, a guitarist who had been the bass player in the then final incarnation of the Ace Frehley Band. Carl had the riff idea in music, which provided the foundation for the song. When Kiss reviewed Ace's ideas, they were initially going to pass on the song in its original form, but there was something that they liked about the music or riff, or perhaps they realized that they had to have a Spaceman song on the album. Gene suggested that Ace rewrite the lyric with something a bit more connected with his character within the band. He'd also had the title kicking around since 1974, so he suggested it as a possibility for Ace's use. Under pressure, Ace rewrote the lyrics. He recalled on the Disc 5 show, I said, give me 45 minutes, I'll go up in the attic here and I'll write the lyrics, because they weren't going to give me a song on the record. And I came back in 45 minutes, I wrote all the lyrics for the song. Even with the changes, the song very nearly didn't happen for the album, with Bruce Fairburn being unsure that Ace could get the song fixed in time to record it the next day. Ace was reportedly still finishing the final verse in the studio as the recording commenced. Paul felt that the song was the most promising of the batch of material that Ace had brought in, but that the arrangement still needed some tweaking. He also added the high guitar part that runs throughout the chorus. At the time, Peter loved the song and felt that it sounded like the real Kiss should sound. But Peter recalled that Ace wanted a song on the album desperately, no matter what, and that he asked Peter to come over and rehearse with him to ensure that he drummed on the performance. From his perspective, at least Ace got one of his own songs on the album and stood to make some money from it. Not surprisingly, Ace thought that Into the Void was one of the strongest musical ideas that he brought to Kiss for the album. However, he was also less than pleased at his Ace Bash in 2002, at the suggestion that Gene and Paul had contributed anything to the song. He ranted, I can't fucking believe that on Into the Void, Gene had the balls to say that he wrote the chorus on that song. Unfucking believable Unfucking believable fucking Gene to insinuate that Into the Void wasn't enough of a song and that him and Paul Stanley had to rearrange it and make it better. It's one of the best songs on that fucking record. And I can fucking play you the original demo with different lyrics and it's almost the same fucking song. However, in a contemporary interview with Roger Lautrig for Prime Choice, Ace admitted that Gene had some input following his rejection of the original Shaking Sharp Shooter demo. Ace recounted, Gene said to me, why don't you rewrite the lyrics and write something about space, about yourself, you know, like you're in a black hole or you're in the void. I said to myself, yeah, into the void, that sounds good. That seems to lend credence, at least, to the concept of the song and its title coming from Simmons. It also seems to suggest that, in other words, Gene was fishing for Rocket Ride Part 2 for Psycho Circus from Ace, firmly typecasting him in a role that he struggled to escape from since. Ace also admitted other assistance with the track in the same interview. He said, everybody's got a little input in it. Paul helped me rearrange the song musically. Gene came up with the title. Peter played a great drum track. 
We rehearsed it in just a small rehearsal studio. In the afternoon, we went over to the studio and we were tracking it, and we did three or four takes. We ended up keeping the first take, which I loved, because the first take always has spontaneity. A couple of takes from the sessions have leaked on the bootleg now known as the Psycho Circus Sessions, one of which is dated to April the 24th, 1998. Carl Cochran told Morbid Sounds about the song's transformation. As far as the basic song structure, almost nothing was changed from what Ace and I wrote. I have the original demos that were cut in Ace's studio, and basically it's the same song. Ace just changed the title of the song after the demo was done, which Gene had mentioned to him. Regardless of all the drama and the creation process, it would be the only song on the album on which all four original members really collaborated or brought something of value to. That made the song greater on the whole than from the individual parts. With Peter on drums, Ace would play rhythm guitar for the track, plus the leads other than the hook Paul brought for the chorus. Gene is clearly on bass. Ace told Ken Sharp in Goldmine magazine that he had a lot of arguments with Bruce Fairburn about the mixing of the song. Ace wasn't happy with the original mix done, finding the harmonies too loud, while the guitars and the drums weren't loud enough. He described it as sounding overproduced, where it needed to be more raw by making the drums and guitars louder. To Ace, Kiss was supposed to sound raw, and since this was the only song on the album with the original four performing their original roles, it had to sound like they were expected to sound. Ace recalled, When I heard the original mix, I wasn't happy with it at all. I flew in, heard the mix, I called up Gene, and I called up Bruce Fairburn. I said I wanted to go in and remix that song tonight. I won't be able to sleep. I went in, and they were very accommodating, and they were nice enough to accommodate me. They said, if you think you can improve it, improve it. So we went in there, and I think we got a better mix. Ace recalled that that session took about four hours. Placing the song on the track sequence on the album also proved a challenge for Gene in particular. He would write Bruce a memo in early June 1998 that had the song placed in a couple of different track orders. On one, it appeared at the end of the album, sandwiched between Raise Your Glasses and In Your Face, which he wanted to segue into a journey of a thousand years. On another, one which he preferred at the time, he wanted it to follow It's My Life and be followed by Dreaming, at the start of what would have been the second side of the album. If nothing else, perhaps Ace can take solace in knowing that the song made Bruce Fairburn's A-list when he categorized the various material that had been brought to him for the sessions. In fact, it appears in third position behind We Are One and I Am Yours. Into the Void was among three new songs, debuted live at the Dodger Stadium show in Los Angeles on Halloween night, 1998. Hello! Tonight you're gonna go into the void! One, two! its inclusion during the tour, it was also included on the live European bonus EP edition of the album reissued in 1999 to promote the tour. Those recordings had been captured during the December leg of the US tour in the Midwest. 
The song remained a constant in the set for a live four as originally conceived, reportedly recorded live in Vancouver, Canada on New Year's Eve 1999-2000. That Millennium Alive album was eventually released as part of the Alive box set in 2006, as a digital standalone in 2008, and finally as double vinyl in 2014. The song has also appeared on the KISS box set in 2001 and the Millennium Best of Volume 3. During the farewell tour of 2000, the song was dropped after three performances, being replaced by additional older catalog songs, such as Lick It Up. With Ace's departure from KISS, so too did this song, though he would later perform it during his 2007 career recovery tour. Ace also later recycled the shaking sharpshooter lyric on What Every Girl Wants on his Space Invader album. 